Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Appreciate you watching all my previous videos. Been having a lot of fun and I've got a lot of stuff coming. Now this video is actually by request. Um, it's gonna be a basics video for people who are just getting into the hobby and they don't know a lot about engines and, and that kind of thing. And I'm gonna do a video on each section of the car, engines, transmissions, rear ends, front suspension, uh, that kind of stuff. So this video is gonna be about Chevy engines. Uh, it applies to most engines, but specifically Chevrolets on this one because that's what I have a bunch of laying around. We're gonna talk about long blocks, short blocks, two bolt main, four bolt main, one piece seal, two piece seal, roller rockers, stock rockers, um, pop-up pistons or dome pistons, dish pistons, flat top, all that kind of stuff. A lot of terms you may have heard that you don't know what it means, you're new to this hobby, you're afraid to ask because a lot of times people get on groups on Facebook, they ask questions and they get flamed immediately and they shut up or leave the group. And that's not cool. So um, one of the guys reached out, asked me to put this video up, said, hey, I, there's a lot of things I don't understand when people are talking about engines, I'm afraid to ask. Uh, could you do a video on some basic terminology? Sure, sounds like a good idea. There's plenty of videos out there. I looked up some to see what they were talking about. And uh, I figured I'd put my own spin on it and let's get to it. Okay, so you hear the term long block, short block, and some people don't know exactly what that means. So I'm gonna explain it to you. This is just a block. It's a bare block, no pistons, no crank, no cam, nothing in it. This is a short block. It's a block with crank, rods, and pistons, and camshaft. Maybe sometimes it doesn't have to have the camshaft to be a short block, but this one has a cam in it. Um, so basically, an assembled rotating assembly in a block is a short block. This is a long block. It is a short block with the heads and valve train on it. Now, I don't have the rocker arms and push rods in this one because I'm in the middle of putting it together, but still considered a long block. Long block, heads, complete assembled bottom end. Short block is just a assembled bottom end block and a rotating assembly. And then you have just a block, which is a bare block, which is what it's often called. Okay, this is a small block, this is a big block. What's the difference? Well, a lot of people think that anything over 400 cubic inches is a big block, and anything less is a small block, but that's not true. They make a 400 cubic inch small block, and they make a 396 cubic inch big block. This is a 454, this is a 350. Now, the, the real difference in what makes a big block a big block is the actual block itself is larger. It's wider, taller, um, you can put a longer stroke in there, it's got a taller deck height, which is, this is your deck, and the deck height is the difference between this and the center line of the crankshaft. So that's your, that's your deck height. Now, it, it enables you to put a longer stroke crank in there, the block's longer front to back and it's wider side to side. So dimensionally, it's larger. That's why they call it a big block. Okay, you can see the difference in the block. Like I said, the top one, and they're both dirty, been sitting in my shop for a long time. But they're both uh, both pretty dirty, but you can see that the uh, four and a quarter inch bore piston's there and your four inch bore piston's there. And then the spacing is a lot wider on that block than it is on this block. The block's just a lot bigger. It's a lot wider. Um, like I said, and a lot taller. Okay, so the next term is two or four bolt main. Two bolt or four bolt. These are your main caps. They hold the crankshaft into the block. Each one of these main caps has two bolts holding it to the block. That is a two bolt main. This block is a four bolt main. On the center three caps holding the crank in, the main caps, you have four bolts. Hence the term four bolt main. Now, some manufacturers, including the big block Chevrolet, if it's a four bolt main, all five caps will have four bolts instead of just the center three. But on the small block Chevrolet, at least stock blocks, a four bolt main, only the center three has four bolts. Some of your aftermarket blocks have four bolts on all five caps. Okay, and the reason you want four bolts holding your main caps in is because under a lot more horsepower, torque, cylinder pressure, RPM, etc., all of the extra stress on a higher horsepower motor, your crank is trying to leave the motor. So the more fastener you have holding it in and keeping it from flexing and moving, the stronger it's going to be. So another thing you're gonna hear is double roller timing chain. Now, 
the stock Chevrolet time and chain and gear is going to have a single row of teeth. I don't have a top gear, but I do have a bottom gear like this. The top stock ones will be nylon um, if it's an original gear. It actually had nylon teeth around. I assume that was for noise or harmonics, probably for noise, but um, they're bad about breaking off and then it jumps time. So anyway, a double roller basically has a chain, two sprockets on the bottom, two sprockets on the, on the top. Like double roller timing chain, single timing chain. I'll get a little closer and show you the gears in there. I don't know if the camera's gonna focus, but you can see the two gears, the two rows of the chain. So that's a double roller timing chain. The timing chain keeps the crank and the cam in time with each other. That's why they call it the timing chain. Okay, now that we talked about your timing chain, keeping the crankshaft and timeshaft in time with each other, we're gonna talk about the camshaft a little bit. Now your camshaft, it looks like this. You've got your journals that sit in your cam bearings right there. You've got your gear on your back that drives your distributor. And you've got your lobes. Now your lobes, they're measured in lift and duration. The lift is how high the lobe is, and the duration is pretty much how wide the lobe is and how far in degrees the lobe actually lifts the lifter off of the camshaft base. Now your lifter looks like this. It's got a machine surface that is not actually completely flat. It's made to spin on top of the camshaft. I'll explain that later, but may probably another video. Um, and then it sits in your lifter bore right here. As your camshaft spins around, the lobes push up on the lifter. The lifter pushes up on the push rod. The push rod hits your rocker arm, and your rocker arm pushes down on your valve spring and opens your valve, which is on the cylinder head, opening up air to the piston. Now your intake valve here lets air in the piston, and then after combustion, your exhaust valve here lets air out of the, out of the cylinder. Now, I said piston when I meant cylinder, but you know what I mean. So anyway, the larger the lift is and the more duration you have, the more air you can get into and out of the engine, therefore making more horsepower, although it does change the RPM at which horsepower is made. Now, speaking of rocker arms, this is what they call a full roller rocker. It has a roller bearing for the pivot, and it also has a roller tip on it for the top of the valve. Now, a stock rocker looks like this. The push rod sits in that little cup there. You've got a ball that sits in the bottom of that, and it's extremely, uh, extremely a sturdy design for stock stuff, but you know, it, there's a lot of friction there. You gotta get a lot of oil down in there to keep that cool, because it's, uh, it's just metal on metal, and it moves up and down, and these don't have very big slots, so a high lift cam will actually bind up this and tear up your uh, stud on your head here. Now, they do make a stamped rocker like this that has the ball in it, but it has a roller tip like this rocker does. So that's a roller tip rocker, this is a stock rocker, and this is a full roller rocker. Okay, so now you know the difference between a long block, a short block, a small block, a big block, roller rocker, stock rocker, um, camshaft, two bolt main, four bolt main, you, I, I, I went through all that. Now we're going to talk about something else that you may have heard, you may not know what it means, you may know what it means, and you just need a little bit more explanation, and that is stroker motor. Okay, this is a crankshaft. Now, a stroker motor is a motor that has a longer stroke than stock. It has been stroked, therefore it is a stroker. Now, stroke is the distance between the crankshaft center line and the rod journal center line. And what that does is that tells you the distance that the piston and rod move up and down the cylinder. If it's a two inch stroke, it moves up and down two inches. If it's a three and a quarter, three and three quarter stroke like this one, 3.75, it moves up 3.75 inches and back down 3.75 inches. Now, if a motor like a 350 Chevrolet like this one has a 3.48 stroke and you put this crankshaft in it, um, it's no longer a 350. You have stroked it with a longer than stock stroke. You now have a stroker motor and depending on the bore, you're gonna end up with a 383 instead of a 350. And they make various sizes of stroker cranks. So pretty much any engine that has a longer than stock stroke is a stroker engine. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna show you is you may have heard the term two-piece or one-piece rear seal. 
Well, your rear seal or rear main seal is on your rear main cap for your rear main bearing. The oil going on the crankshaft have to have some way to keep from coming out. So you have a seal on the back of the crankshaft. Now, your rear main cap comes off and you have a seal right here. And that goes around this part of the crankshaft and keeps it, it keeps oil from coming out. Now there's a piece down in the block and there's this piece here. So that's a two piece. A one piece rear main seal actually has a different flange on the crankshaft and then it also has a different uh, spot on the back of the block and it's got an aluminum cover that basically slides over a round flange on the crankshaft that has a seal that goes on there. So it's got a big journal on the back. It's got a, a almost like your front timing cover seal. So it's got a large seal that goes over the end of the crankshaft and bolts down and that's a one piece rear seal. So it's not two halves, less prone to leaking, but like I said, most of your performance stuff is two, two piece main seal. Okay, now we're gonna talk about pistons. Now your piston and rod is what hooks to the crankshaft, goes up and down in the cylinders, draws the air in, pushes the air back up, makes the explosion happen, forces the crankshaft back down and power out the back of the engine, and then it forces the exhaust back up through the exhaust valve and out the header or exhaust manifold. Now, uh, hopefully you know that much and this isn't that new to you. Um, terms you may hear on pistons is flat top, dish, dome, pop-up, which is an old term, but some people still use it. And I'm gonna explain what that is. So this is a flat top piston. It has four valve reliefs in it. Now, basically it's a flat top, which is, you know, hence the name, right? Um, your valve reliefs are so your valves on your head, as the piston sits here when the valve comes down, it doesn't crash into the head, especially if you have a higher lift cam. Some pistons don't have valve reliefs in them. Um, they don't need them because of either the valve angle or the very small lift of the cam. Some of them are just completely flat top. Some only have one valve relief for the intake valve, like the big block I have does, and then others just have two valve reliefs. This is a dome piston, also called a pop-up. And what it does is it has a hundred thousandths tall dome sticking above the surface of the piston. So it is a dome piston, it gives you higher compression. The valve relief on this one is a trough style instead of two individuals. It's just got one big valve relief going across the front. This is a forged piston, this is a cast piston. Now, a quick way to tell the difference if you're looking at them, a cast piston, and I think the camera will focus on this, a cast piston has casting lines and all that on the inside, and a forged piston will be nice and smooth on the inside. So, forged pistons are much stronger. If you're using turbos or nitro superchargers or real high performance, you want a forged piston. Not completely necessary, but a cast or hypotectic piston um, is usually what's stock in an engine. But, you know, they, they're plenty of performance on a cast piston, but a forged is much stronger. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Now, I know a lot of you guys already know everything I talked about in this video. You know more than that and probably more than me. That's fine. This is mainly for beginners. Like I said, a guy requested a video. He's just getting into the hobby and kind of afraid. He's intimidated by some groups on Facebook when he asked questions. So he sent me a message, hey, any chance of you doing a video on some of this stuff? I said, sure, no problem. I'm also gonna do some videos on like setting timing, adjusting valves the right way, um, transmission type stuff, you know, shift kit, what all it means, you know, rear end terms, front end terms, carburetors, I'm going to go through all of it, and I'm also going to do my regular stuff. I'm, I've got, I'm ready to take Franken over to the drag strip. I've got some videos planned for my 73. Uh, I'm going to be doing paint and body on that. I've got to do the uh, 69 Grudge car. This is the 307 for the 69 Grudge car. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I'm putting this together. So, going to have some good videos. Please subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment. If you have any ideas or questions, let me know. I try to answer everyone. See you next video.